Hi there, this is Terry from stampinmagic.com. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I'm not going to take you through a complete project. Instead, I'm going to show you how to use the Stampamajig stamp positioning tool. This kit comes with the T-bar handle, a reusable plastic imaging sheet, and also full instructions. You can find the stamp on page 217 of the UK 2017-2018 annual catalogue. The stamp jig is used to help you stamp and position images exactly where you want them on a project. Now it's mainly used for wood mount stamps. Um, although you can use it for clear mount and photopolymer, I'll come to that later on. But I'm going to use a stamp from my Friendship Sweetest Thoughts set to show you how to use it. Now, as you can see, this card has the image placed on the bottom right hand side. And I use the stamp and the jig to help me do this to make sure the image was straight. You can just use the stamp as is and just go for it. Although that's not something I do. I'm not very good at stamping straight without help, um, which is why I use the stamp and magic. To start, you need to position the handle on one of the corners of the plastic imaging sheet. Now this could be top left or bottom left, or if you're left-handed, this could be the top right or the bottom right. All you have to do is remember which corner you're going to use and stick with it so it doesn't get confusing. I've always used the top left. So we firstly position the handle and then you choose your ink. Now you can use any ink with the stamp and jig. I prefer stays on because it's a permanent ink on slick surfaces but I'll show you how to use a dye-based ink with the stamp and jig. I'm using Pear Pizarre's here. Just ink up my stamp and I'm going to keep that stamp up high and away from that plastic sheet and position it firstly into my T-bar. So it must be touching along the top and down the left hand side. Then you slide your um, stamp down towards the plastic and stamp the image. Now because I've used Pear Pizazz ink, you can hardly see the image. So I'm just showing you that if you choose a light coloured ink, you might find it difficult to see on the plastic. Now with dye based inks, they will rub off the plastic. So you have to be careful because if you get the ink on your fingers, that can transfer to your project. Now, if you've used a dye based ink, um, to remove it from your imaging sheet, you can just use a, a damp cloth or a wet wipe. So now I'm going to stay with dye, ba dye based inks, but I'm going to use early espresso, which is much darker. So again, I've positioned my stamp and then I'm going to slide it down the handle and onto that imaging sheet. And this time you can clearly see the image there. So it makes it very easy to position the image onto your card and stamp it wherever you want that image to be. Okay, I'm going to stamp this again in the bottom right hand side. So I position my imaging sheet, sheet on the cardstock and then I add my handle. Okay, and once you've got that in position, you want to keep your hand on the handle, on the T-bar. You don't want to take it off and then put it back on again. This can cause it to move slightly so you lose the placement. Okay, so once you've done that, you can ink up your stamp and position it in the T-bar exactly as before. Slide it down to stamp and you have a perfect result. I'm going to do exactly the same thing again and I'll take my imaging sheet and position it in another corner 
add my T-bar, making sure I don't move that card underneath. Once I'm happy, I'll anchor that T-bar with my hand, ink up my stamp, position it in the T-bar and slide it down to stamp it. Now this time, as you can see, I didn't get a clean impression. I missed some of the middle of the stamp. So as long as you don't move that T-bar handle, you can ink up your stamp and you can go again. So you can double stamp or even triple stamp if necessary. If you use stays on ink with your imaging sheet, then it will be permanent. So once dry, it won't rub off and you won't get ink on your fingers. Um, when you do want to remove it, you'll have to use a stays on cleaner to do so. Now, the main reason that I love to use the stays on ink is that I can create permanent imaging sheets for all of my wood mount stamp sets. Okay, so I have each image on the corner of a plastic sheet and I've got several sheets usually within a set and I can pick up my stamp set, open it up, and I'm ready to go. I don't have to faff about creating um, an imaging sheet each time I want to use it. I've already got them made and ready. To create these permanent imaging sheets, I use this thick plastic polypropylene. I purchased these online. They're A4 book covers. Um, I just cut them down to size using a guillotine. It's also possible to create these permanent imaging sheets using cardstock vellum. It's um, of a sufficient thickness that you can still place your handle in one of the corners and use it in exactly the same way. The only difference is because it's much thinner, you haven't got much of an anchor when you position that handle, so you have to be careful the handle doesn't slip onto the top of the vellum. Okay, so it gives you exactly the same results. So you can cut that down to size and use that in exactly the same way as the polypropylene. Alternatively, you can use acetate. You can use this as a permanent imaging sheet with stays on or as um, a reusable sheet using dye-based inks. So again, just position your handle exactly as before, remove the sheet, position your stamp and stamp it down. I did mention that I also use my stamp and magic handle for my clear mount stamps, my red rubber clear mount. So I'll show you how I do this. So I'm going to mount my stamp onto a clear block and if I'm using the stamp and magic handle I do like to use a block with a nice square edge, it just makes it a bit easier. It's always useful to add a little temporary adhesive to the reverse of your card when using the stamp and magic. This will help ensure that it doesn't move when you're using the handle. Okay, so I have my sheet ready and I'm going to add my handle to that top left corner, making sure that plastic is pushed right into that corner of the handle. Then I'm going to position my block and slide it down to make the impression on that imaging sheet. Then I can position it on my card wherever I want to stamp it. I'm going to put it in the center. So I reposition my handle, remove the sheet, position my stamp and there you have your sentiment exactly where you want it to be. Now one thing to remember when using um, clear mount stamps is that if this stamp comes off the block, perhaps when you're cleaning it and you put it back on, you cannot then reuse the original imaging sheet that you created for it. Okay. 
I'll show you what can happen if you do. So this time I want that sentiment in the bottom right hand corner. So I'll ink up my stamp and stamp it down, but oops, not in the place I want it, okay? If your stamp comes off the block, then you must then recreate your imaging sheet. You have to create a new one. So clean it off, stamp it down again. Okay, so we have a new impression on our imaging sheet. We put that, this time we'll stamp it bottom left. ink up my stamp and stamp it down okay and this time you've got perfect placement exactly where you expected it to be so the only difference between wood mount and clear mount stamps are that you cannot produce permanent imaging sheets for your clear mount stamps because whenever you add them your stamps to the block you will never get it in exactly the same position okay so it's pointless trying to create a permanent um, imaging sheet for your stamp sets at a clear mount. You can also use your Stampin' Magic handle with your photopolymer stamps. Now these are clear um, stamps. So you would use it in exactly the same way as we've done so before. Mount your stamp on a clear block Take our reusable sheet, ink up your stamp, position it in that handle and slide it down. Okay, and stamp it again. We didn't get a clear impression the first time. Then you can position that imaging sheet wherever you want the stamp to be. Stamp it. And you again you have perfect placement now you may wonder why you would want to do that with a photopolymer clear stamp but as we use our photopolymer stamps they will stain and sometimes the staining can be so bad that you can no longer see through them certainly not um, easily and clearly so it may be that you want to use uh, the stamp and magic handle to help you with placement my watercolour wing stamp set is a good example of um, a photopolymer set that's quite badly stained. I really struggle to position these stamps. It's a three step set that the images layer on top of each other. And if I use light colour ink, I find it very difficult to see through um, to exactly where to place them. So that's when I would use my handle. Oh, just to remove the temporary adhesive that you put on the back of your card if you just rub your finger along it that will remove that adhesive okay back to the cards I created for my friendship's sweetest thoughts mini series um, I use the stamp and magic handle to help me position the images on all of these cards um, so for this first one the border on the background layer this little um, floral flourish stamp was positioned using the stamp and majig and I also once the central image was cut out I also used it to position the sentiment on the bottom of that now this is card I showed you before so I use the handle to position my image bottom right for this one, I use the stamp and magic handle to help me position the sentiment at the bottom and also to create this border along the left hand side using um, the little flower image in the set. Now I used the handle a lot with this card. Um, not only for the little strip that I stamped my sentiment on, but for each of the main images that are stamped all over the background. And finally, this is a sneak peek for you of tomorrow's card. So I use the handle again to position each of the four 
main images on this card. Thanks for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future videos. Bye for now.